So welcome to another shir from Varmai Marim for preparation for Pesach. We are currently in the middle of or close to the end of Eis Gimel and the third chapter and we are on page 42. So yesterday we had a lot of discussions about um, we had a lot of discussion. Oh, we had a lot of discussion about what this means in, in, in our personal Veda, which means how do we actually, how do we actually live with the concept of leaving the triumph? Because I remember we spoke about it way in the beginning that we're supposed to, there's a whole discussion about whether it's every single day or whether it's once a year. It's, we say, what do you mean? Because of this, as it says in the Pasuk, um, because oh, Bavor Zen, and it's as if we're holding matzah and mara, so therefore it must mean because you and I don't really keep our matzah and mara on the table every single day, every single, um, every uh, all the every single day of the, of every year. So therefore, it must mean that it must be on the fifteenth of of Nisan, which is Pesach, and so therefore that's what we commemorate. That's what we relive Yitzchak Mitzrayim. That said, the fact is that we do. Um, we do have, and the Rabbi explains that we have this concept of matzah and mara in a spiritual sense every single day. So therefore, we are meant to, and, and it says in in Masechtas in uh, Mishnah Brachis that it's every day, which are all days. So therefore, all means all the nights, and days means all the days, and so therefore, it means every, not just every single year, but also every single day and twice a day. So. In the end of the, like at nowadays, how we live with this is that every, we say Shema in the morning and then that and then evening, and that's us commemorating and remembering um, and reliving Yitzhak Mitzrayim every single moment. And so, therefore, we had to understand one second what does it actually mean, Mitzrayim? What does it actually mean to live with, live with this? So, we had to explain what Mitzrayim, what Mitzrayim is, and how it's connected to Mitzrayim, to limitations. And we also had to explain, or the Rabbi explained, how. Um, we, wah, 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 wah. oh, I skipped that part, but we had a whole beautiful discussion on what Mashiach comes and what's, when Mashiach comes, how we're going to still celebrate Mitzrayim, Yitzhak Mitzrayim, and how that even works out, because when Mashiach comes, it's as if we're celebrating our, you know, high school graduation or college graduation, and uh, meanwhile, it's leaving Mitzrayim is going to be as if we're celebrating our preschool graduation, so like, what exactly are we gaining? But we also went into a beautiful discussion about Egypt, what does it mean, Mitzrayim, and how, is, how could it be possible for Hashem to create something that goes against him? And the reality is that Hashem created that by the first symptom, the symptom erosion, the first time Hashem removed a piece of himself so that he can rebuild something set, like with his same building, but separate, quote unquote, separate from him. That was the original essence of the first Mitzrayim which is Gevura, he separated something out of it, and then he re-put it back in, or he put it back in in a different form, Seder Stalshus, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't understand anything I just said, please go back to previous uh, classes. I explained it much more in depth. And yesterday we had an incredible discussion, very practical, very livable, about where the Rebbe says, okay, and this is our Rebbe again, this is, not a, this is our Rebbe talking to our generation how we need, we absolutely need to live with Mitzrayim and, and with this concept of leaving our limitations, how we need to leave Mitzrayim and live with that concept every single day. And so therefore, we went to discuss, what does it mean for me? What does it mean for me and for every single one of you? And I gave a few different examples. Number one is we have to go beyond our intellect. Like some, sometimes we have too much time to ask funny questions and say I, I recently somebody asked me like I don't know if I really want Mashiach um, because I don't really want my life to change I like my life as it is now and so I said okay first of all we have to learn what Mashiach is because when if you realize what Mashiach is you're going to realize you're going to still have your amazing life that you have now just without the struggles of of you know Tirtas Parnasa, without the struggles of emotional and psychological and health struggles and all that stuff so but also it just means we have to take we have to take the time to go beyond our intellect and we say okay maybe i don't understand what this means maybe i don't understand what why or or whatever but we have to realize that the abister tur is true and the abister is true and the abister is good and so therefore this must be good even now our intellect um, there are many people struggling with confusion about what's the story 
so many people uh, last night I was listening to a, a phone call, a very beautiful phone call. And somebody asked on the phone call, how, how am I supposed to speak to my kids? Because they've been davening for, especially here in Crown Heights, the, the, the Baruch Dein Emes rate of, of Crown Heights is really intense. And we're hearing a lot of people not, not surviving this virus. And it's, it's, it's very intense to live in a time like this. And so they were saying, how do I talk to my kids about this? They spent so much time saying to Hillel for these people. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> it didn't make it. How, how do I handle that? So we have to realize that we may not understand. And, and the Rebbe even says to himself that there's certain things we don't understand. And when the Shach comes, we're gonna, we're gonna be able to understand. So we have to go beyond our intellect and say, okay, Hashem, I don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand this whole situation, but this is you. So uh, I'm still gonna dive and I'm, and I'm gonna dive in for revealed good, but I, I can't let my lack of understanding of the Avisters ways hold me back from being from doing my part in this in this uh, in this existence. I can't I can't let the the constraints of my of my limitations of my intellect hold me back from doing my part. So that's number one. We also spoke about disregarding calculations of society makes for us. So we spoke about different mentalities that seep in, whether it's our viewpoint on children and having children, whether it's our view, viewpoint on Parnassa, whether it's meant to be kept and what are we, not giving staka. A lot of different things. We have to be very careful where our mindsets come from and where we're listening, what we're listening to and what we're allowing to enter into our, our lives. We also have to disregard what our body and our animal soul tell us that we like it or we don't like it. I don't always like waking up early, but you know what? The moment I start davening, the moment, the moment I join this call and I, I learn a mimer with you guys, the moment that's just like, boom, I, ha I, I went past my limitations of what my nefesh of Bahamas wanted from me because I just wanted to stay in bed. But doing what Hashem wants from me and doing and really pushing that limit is going to be, it, it really is amazing and it's so enlivening and et cetera. And not only that, but we even discuss how we're meant to go above and beyond the limitations of our nefesh of kiss. And a limitation of our nefesh of kiss, as it's explained in, in the footnote, is that sometimes an nefesh of kiss says, oh, you know, there's a shlichus that needs to be done, but I'm not the one to do it. I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. Maybe I don't know how to learn well enough. Maybe I don't know enough chassidus to be able to teach to somebody else. Set all of that aside and do your part. You, we are all waiting for you. We are all waiting for your shlichus to be accomplished in this world so that Mishjah can come already. So let's, let's go beyond our limitations, even the limitations that our Nefesh, Abraham, uh, nefesh Alikis seems to put on us. Okay? And so we see that when we do this, when we go beyond our limitations, the Abishra helps us beyond his, quote-unquote, his limitations. Beligvul, beyond limitations of normal of normalcy like for example a great example is this the last campaign we did for living Chassidus a few weeks ago it, it it was beyond limitations and living Chassidus really pushes all limitations to help each other to to, to help everybody that needs and the avister gave us back beyond limitation like that whole for anybody who was watching that campaign was Bleak vol. That was a Mashiach Times campaign. I don't know how it happened. It was just a miracle after miracle, and Baruch Hashem, we did it. So, um, and not only that, but this actually mirrors what actually happened in Mitzrayim, which is that when the Mitzrayim were going through, were going through darkness, they were going through the Chayshach. Then the Yidden were simultaneously living with life, with light. I mean, so. Here, the whole world could be in darkness and every single thing around us could be darkness. I mean, currently right now, everything feels pretty darn dark, but we can live above and beyond that and we can live with light. And not only that, but our light is what's going to shine forth and it's what's going to flow outwards to the entire world. So we have to make sure to light ourselves up and be that light. And not only that, but when we fulfill this, our mission, when we do our part, every single person on this call and every single person who's going to watch the recording and every single person... And the whole wide world has a mission. You have to realize you do. You have a mission, whether it's in your house or outside of your house, for both in your house and outside of your house, you do have a mission. And once you start working towards that mission, then we can bring and, and you can actually make a dear of a dwelling place for Hashem. 
And this starts by our immediate surroundings, which means cha changing ourselves, our attitudes, our mindsets, our emotional structures, really, really figuring out how to leave our own mitzvah of what we think we're capable of doing and really focusing on that. And then through changing ourselves, we eventually change our surroundings, our communities, then it, it, to the end of the whole wide world. Then we're going to bring the Shiach very right now. Very right now. <laughs> um, okay. And that's where we left off. So I'm going to start on page 42 and I'm going to reread a little bit of the top of the, the, the first paragraph on page 42, which starts the word this. So this, which means that the whole world gets affected, right? This is accomplished through illuminating our surroundings and thereby the entire world with the light of Torah and mitzvahs. As the verse states, a mitzvah is a candle and Torah is light. This is... Yeah, ner mitzvahs of Torah are. Yep. Consequently, the idea that Hashem is the master of the world... Again, remember what we said about Mashiach. Mashiach means that the whole wide world realizes that Hashem is the master of the world. And everything that Hashem, it's, as, it's, it's that when we see the words of Hashem creating the world, we see the revealed how Hashem is the creator and the master. Okay. So the idea that Hashem is the master of the world will begin to shine there as well. And we will fuse the spiritual with the material, creating a dwelling place for Hashem. Ultimately, we bring about the fulfillment of the above mentioned verse. And this is the pasuk that we said earlier about the revelations of when Mashiach is going to come. The glory of Hashem will be revealed and all flesh together will see that the mouth of Hashem has spoken. We will see the word of Hashem that creates and gives life and existence to every entity in the universe. So as long as we do our part and we shine light on ourselves and through ourselves and our family and through our family on the community and through our community on the whole wide world, as long as we do our part, we're bringing light and we're going to help reveal the fact that the Abishur is in charge and the Abishur is the creator. And we're bringing that reality of Mashiach that we, we should live with right now. This is true at present as well as the Baal Shem Tov teaches. On the Pasa, God, your word stands in the heavens forever. Although nowadays it is not visible. However, when we serve Hashem in the manner described above, which means we serve Hashem beyond our, what we think are limitations, this will be revealed in the future, right? So as long as we do our part, and we, even if people don't necessarily see the light right away, when Mashiach comes, they'll see the light, when we will see our own light of all the amazing things that we've done. As a result, our perspective of the world's limitations changes. We do not view them as limitations, Rather, all we see is how they are created by the word of Hashem, okay? Take a moment to realize that. Take a moment and say, okay, one second. What is something that's holding me back? Whether it's a feeling of not having enough parnasa, whether it's a feeling of not having enough control over your life, whether it's a feeling of struggles with time, time constraints or, you know, like organizing your schedule, or being disciplined, or all of these things, we have to realize they're not separate entities coming to attack us. Okay. They're not separate entities coming to attack us. It's not someone else who's, gonna, who's making our lives miserable. We have to realize every single thing that we feel is our adversary. We feel that it's, it's, it's coming and, and going against us. It's really the Abishra himself. And I'm not saying that the Abishra is coming to go against you. We have to realize that that's a facade. It's a, it's a, it's a concealment of the Abishur. And we have to know that there is nothing separate from Hashem. No matter what it is, no matter if that's that bill that we haven't paid or if it's that, uh, the fact that our kids are home and we have to figure out what to do with them, etc. There's nothing that's against us, okay? Let me read that again. We do not view them, meaning our limitations, as limitations. Rather, all we see is how they are created by the word of Hashem. This itself brings about their disillusion. They disappear. It stops being an issue. Even our own, our self-imposed limitations. We have to realize things I say I can't do. I can't wake up early to join a mimer share, which kudos to all the mommies on this call because you guys are, it takes a lot to really make this time and, and have, have some time to, to learn. So you, you created, you just broke through those limitations and everybody else who may not have to wake up this early because they don't have work 
starting yet, right? So everything that holds, our, holds us back, whether it's from the outside or it's our own personal, oh, I really can't do this, or I really shouldn't push myself, or I can't push myself. We have to realize Hashem is the one that does it. And so therefore, once we realize it's Hashem, not does it. Hashem is the one that creates the world. Hashem is the king over everything. There's nothing that can go against us when we're on Hashem's team. So therefore, it just dissolves. The, it, it disappears. It's not real. It, it doesn't have mamashas. It doesn't have substance against us. Since we see that they are created by the word of Hashem, they are self-imposed and therefore not real as explained in numerous texts. And here, I actually, want to actually, I actually want to read the footnote, footnote 53. See, for example, in Sefer Maimarim 5657, page 156, okay? And here's a footnote. When one is confined due to outside forces, the restraint is genuine. If by contrast, one chooses to confine himself, the restraint is not real at any moment. He can leave his self-imposed confinement the same is true with Hashem. Since he chose to create the world in a restricted manner, the restrictions are not real. Hashem created this, this world with, with restrictions. And being that Hashem is the one that created them, they're self-imposed by Hashem. So therefore, they are not real. The significance of the restrictions we encounter thus depend on how we look at them. As soon as we realize that they were put in place by Hashem and are therefore not genuine, they will lose their potency and our reality as well and will become irrelevant. Okay? Anything. Right now, take a moment. We're going to do this again. And tomorrow night, Mitzvah Hashem, at the Mox Seder, we're going to do this. We're going to do a whole practice on it. But take a moment and think, what's holding me back now? What's something, a self-imposed thought, a mindset, a um, something that's holding me back or even financials, whatever, whether it's self-imposed or not self-imposed, take a moment and realize it is not real. So therefore it cannot hold you back from doing your purpose. If your purpose, for example, I'll give an example for me to sign up for a business school that I'm kind of sort of taking right now during this whole Corona craziness for me to sign that up. I, I didn't have the finances for it, nor did I think I, I really to make the time it's, I had to put out an extra four to six hours a week, four to six hours a week. Like my schedule is so packed between living citizen and being a mother. And at that point there was even fundraising, like all this stuff. How am I supposed to carve that out? But I realized one second, this is the next step I need to do my shlichas. I need to take living chassidus to the next level. In order to do that, I need to know how to run a business properly. And I need to take this business school. And I really, really, really need to work hard on it. So therefore, there is no limitation. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try my best. And Baruch Hashem, I was able to sign up. And I'm slowly but surely able to pay it off. And I'm slowly but surely making time to make it a reality. So again, nothing in your world that's holding you back is real. Hashem creates everything. And Hashem's the one that made it. So therefore, don't let it hold you back. Is it? It's not real. Okay. Turning the page. Page 44. This is why the daily spiritual exodus takes place when reciting the Shema, as explained in Tanya. The Shema prayer, the, the davening of Shema, includes the Pasuk, Remember what we said, is your emotions. is your intellect, right? With all your emotions and with all your intellect, you're supposed to turn to Hashem. You're supposed to leave your mitzarim. And what does it mean? Might. Might means anything beyond what you think is capable. Anything beyond your limitations, you need to do this. And we say this, sorry, we say this twice a day. We say it in the morning and we say it in the evening. Which means, which means that we have to do this on a daily basis. Every single day, twice a day, we have to question our limitations. We have to say one second. They're holding me back. I need to move past this. I need to move past this. As stated above, to serve Hashem with all of our might means to serve Him without limitations, which is synonymous with the spiritual idea of leaving Mitzrayim. This is the, besides the fact that when reciting the words of the opening verse of the Shema, which is Hashem is one, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Eloi Hashem Echad, at that point, 
in it, it says that we're where is the where's 56 yeah it says in several different places that our mindset our our kavana when saying hashem echad needs to be that we're it's as if we are having the serious nefesh we're really we're, we're giving ourselves up for the oneness of hashem right because all the martyrs that have passed away that have been it, it's been at the stage of bow down to whatever or you'll die so we have to realize that we can't we have to live with this concept that hashem is one any self-doubt or any self-limitation is not a separate entity to hashem hashem is one and in order and a mindset we have when we say shema is that we have Mr. Nefesh for such a thought. We have Mr. Nefesh for such a reality that Hashem is one. One is to bear in mind the basic intent, which is to be prepared to sacrifice our lives for Hashem, a submission that removes us from our limitations. Okay, so that is ice. Beautiful. That is the end of ice. Gimel. It was a little, it, it, Baruch Hashem, it was a long ice, but we're going to, we're, we're checking through. This mimer, this first mimer has, let me see. It only has six. Okay, so now we're halfway through. We're Mitzvah Hashem going to finish this mimer before Pesach. We have plenty of time and we'll even have Mitzvah Hashem some time to, for bringing it out. And then the second mimer is all about Acher and Shal Pesach. So Mitzvah Shem will be able to learn at least most of it, hopefully. It's also, okay, the next one's a little bit longer. So let's see what we can do. Um, actually, no, it's about the same size. So Mitzvah Shem will be able to finish this one before Pesach. And if possible, we'll be able to start the next one. That way we have a head start. And then over Pesach, Mitzvah Shem will learn the next one, which is all about Acher and Shal Pesach. So now we're going to have a mimer that you're going to be able to live with um, now with Pesach coming. And Mitzvah Shem, you're going to have a mimer to be able to live with for Achron Shal Pesach and the second days and, and Mashiach Soda. So, hope everybody has a wonderful day. And, yeah.